Hey everyone, Dave back here in the garage and I'm ready to pull some orders. We got some listing we gotta do. We got some comments that triggered me. You know, just a standard day in the garage. I am not really triggered. I actually, I do have one dilemma. I can't figure out how to ship this giant thing I sold for $3.89. And uh, I'm gonna have to do some sort of a Frankenstein box today, I think, to try to make that work. But it, it technically isn't due to go out till tomorrow, so I've been like not in a huge rush to deal with it. Today is Tuesday, it has to go out Wednesday. So I think I'll be okay. I think I'll just focus on it today. I'll be honest, one of the biggest things that's kind of driving me nuts right now is my workspace is so messy and disorganized that it's like driving me bananas. I think one of the biggest things I struggle with is power management. <laughs> is that a common problem? Like I almost need to mount a couple power things up on the wall because it's so frustrating to never have anywhere to plug anything in. It drives me nuts. It's one of the reasons I don't do things like test the you know, Nintendo Wii's and VCR's I get because there's no easy way. I don't have a good setup for it. I feel like I did. There was like a 10 minute period where I had this set up in a, in a way that I could easily test electronics, but then something went awry. <laughs> you know, I think I had a TV on my desk. I could do that. I still have that TV. I could put it over there, plug it in, but I'm out of plugs over there, which again is my problem. Same thing like if I need to test anything electronic, I'm out of plugs in my listing area, which makes it very challenging to test electronics. So I really need to make it easier for myself to list because that will help me list more frequently. I have been listing a decent amount, not a ton, but a good good dollar amount. Again, I said, <laughs> I said in the last video, what I really want to do is just list expensive stuff. So I don't have to list constantly, but the stuff I list is always good and high dollar. You know, for example, I listed this yesterday. This is an outdoor gourmet fish fryer for 50 bucks. Now, the thing about it is, it's got plenty of actives and solds at $79.99, free shipping. But it's really heavy and big. And like the UPS quote, when I put it in like all the dimensions, say it's gonna cost from 20 to 200 to ship. So I basically am only gonna successfully sell that if it's locally. Now, it is from Academy Sports. And I just watched, someone did a short where they said you can take stuff into Academy, it's brand new sealed. Got it at a yard sale for 10 bucks. And someone did say you can bring in like three things a year to Academy without a receipt and get a refund. Now, I don't know if that's like a cash refund or a gift card or whatever, but Academy Sports sells it for 79.99. So the temptation is to just like deal list it and run down to Academy Sports and quickly get 80 bucks for my 10 bucks. That would be kind of nice. Uh, but you know, is that morally wrong? I mean, not really, because they'll still just sell it. So it's a brand new item that they'll just put in their inventory and sell it. I don't know though. Well, what's your opinion on that? Okay, I know that that video I saw was a short, got a lot of negativity on it. I think it was Flip the World Texas uh, for people saying he shouldn't return it if he didn't buy it there. So I don't know. Okay, so this is what sold. This I got the flea market for $40. It sold for $104. It's a teen, it's Bebop and Rocksteady. Bebop and Rocksteady. So 40 into 104. I'm just making sure. Yeah, the box looks pretty good. The guy at the, the flea market had a bunch of those, but that was the only one worth good money. The rest were worth like 40. I mean, 40 is good money, but he was charging 40. I was able to find the diamond in the rough. Like, is that Jafar? No. Yeah, you must seek out the diamond in the rough. That's Jafar. Okay, up next, out of bin three, we sold a rubber squirrel. Because why not? Why not sell a rubber squirrel? <laughs> For a good amount of money, too. You know, it's not something I really thought. When I bought this, I didn't realize that it was worth as much as it was. It was in, like, a tote full of roly-poly toys that I got at the flea market. And I thought the roly-poly -po toys were good. They weren't that great. I've been selling them in lots for, like, 15, 20 bucks. I sold a few individually for, like, 10 to 15 as well. And I paid, like, 50. But this guy was in there, this little lemur. Sold for $30. Is it a lemur or a squirrel? I put, <laughs> I labeled it rubber squirrel monkey. But now that I'm like looking at it, it seems like a lemur. I don't know, what do you guys think? Is that a lemur or a squirrel monkey? Is a squirrel monkey a thing? I don't think that's a thing. I think I'm just saying words. So yeah, $30. So that almost pays for that whole tote. I've already made profit on that tote. So that's just pure profit at this point from that buy. So that's pretty good. You know, I did have a comment this morning. That's what I was talking about. Like the comments triggering me. It didn't really trigger me. It just was like, it didn't bother me at all, really. But I, I wanted to tell, I, th I just think it was wrong. It was incorrect. And that's, that's why I wanted to bring it up. Jay's Toy Shop, we sold some. The comment was on my latest picking video and they were like, you just keep getting worse at this. You're picking worse and worse items and making worse and worse buys as time goes on. Uh, so yeah, just like something super negative about how I'm getting worse and worse at picking. And I just don't necessarily think it's true. I actually would say I'm getting better at picking. I will say like the only time that I let out like my not great picker side is when I do plushes and like action figures. 
I will usually make buys on plushes that are a little higher than maybe I should as far as like what plushes are. Because here's the thing about plush. They sell, there's some really good ones that sell for a lot. I've got one listed for 70 with three watchers right now, which is a bolo. I'll show it to you. I know uh, Rebel Reseller talks about these all the time. So they call love, love or something like that. I don't know. Can't remember what they're called. They're Fisher Price. This one here sells for like $70. So there's great plush out there and some plush that move really fast, but the majority of plush won't sell super fast. So my advice to people who want to sell plush is like, you know, get a good deal, get a low price if you're going to buy plush because you're going to sit on them for a while. But every now and then I'll pay one, even $2 a plush because I know I can sell them quickly on whatnot. And sometimes I'll only sell them for $2 or $1 and maybe break even, but the amount of times I do better than break even, like selling for six to $8 makes it worth it for me to invest a little more. So that's really, other than that though, I, I mean, I may sometimes be moderately unsure of how well I'm gonna do but I generally know I'm gonna do okay on buys like the Mahjong set I bought this Mahjong set for a hundred dollars looking at comps they sell anywhere from 80 to 500 but based on the fact that the tiles were Bakelite and the rails were Bakelite, just everything was Bakelite in there, I was very confident I could get like 250 to 350 for it. And at $100, it seemed like it would sell fast based on sell through rate. I picked it up. So I don't, anyways, all that to say, I don't think necessarily I'm becoming a worse picker. I think that's false. There you go, sold this. This is RCBS 505 scale. This converts ounces to grains. Some sort of tool. I found this in the state sale, a state sale for $2. And we sold that for $23.99 plus shipping. That was just this weekend, actually. Got a bunch of interesting like super fine measurement type tools. If you find tools that look like they're used to like do really fine measuring, it, they're probably okay. I'd look them up. So because I several of them I got were worth over a hundred bucks. I actually have something cool. It'll be sold by the time you see this because I'm doing a whatnot auction tonight. But I Google lens this thing. I got this this weekend. It looks like just a rubber dinosaur, right? But I actually think this is based on Google Lens from the ride Dinosaur at Disney uh, Animal Kingdom. And they're closing that ride down. And so I think that's a pretty cool item, but I don't know, I couldn't find a comp or any actives or anything like that. But I found a blog where someone was talking about them announcing that and it was like pictures of it like 10 years ago. So it's kind of cool. And I do think part of the reason the person commented that is because I put like, she got the better of me at this garage sale. And the only reason I put that is because like, it was a big tote of plush. And the tote of plush was, I said, how much for the whole tote? She said 40. And I was like, I really don't wanna pay 40. because just it seemed like a lot for what was in there and I was like let me just pull out the ones I like and I pulled out like half maybe two-thirds of them and I said okay so now this smaller pile how much and she said 35 and I was like oh I should have just bought the whole thing for five bucks more but that's you know again I still I already sold I still I think I sold all of that I think I brought around 250 from that box of uh, plush back when Carrie was here so I turned 40 into 250 in three days I mean I wouldn't call that bad picking anyways I'm done I, I'm not <laughs> I don't need to defend myself. I just, I don't know. Sometimes you get me going. All right, out of bin 12, we sold a Fitbit charge. And this was funny because this one I had listed as a Fitbit charge activity band, blah, 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 which I had used someone else's listing and I copied it. Eight, nine, 10, 11, so it should be in here, uh, 12. And someone messaged me and said, hey, is this really a Fitbit or is it just the band? because they didn't think it was very clear, the writing. And I said, oh, it's an actual Fitbit. And then they bought it instantly. So I guess you should be careful with your titles. If people don't really understand what's in there, they might have been a buyer and then you lose out because you didn't label it properly. This sold though, 20 bucks, uh, plus shipping, $8 in shipping. Man, I could have sworn when I bought this, it was worth like $50, but I guess, it's the thing with these electronics. You gotta get them listed fast because if you don't get them listed fast, they drop in value. There's a new iPhone announcement coming out today. So like if all your old iPhones, iWatches are gonna drop in value. So I do think with electronics, you gotta be quick to list. And of course that doesn't apply for all, right? Like a Nintendo Wii is not gonna change much in value. A VCR is not gonna change much in value, but, but I've been watching Black Mirror, speaking of VCR, which is like, it's a show on Netflix and they try to be like Twilight Zone. Some episodes are really good, some are really lame. Uh, you know, whereas Twilight Zone, every episode was great. But there's this episode I was watching, which wasn't a great one because it felt more like, I don't know, like a murder mystery, not really, not really anything. It was like, it was called Block Henry. It's from the latest season. And I'm not gonna talk about it too much. I just was gonna say that in it, they have a VCR that they're using to watch back old tapes and like they find some old footage of some, some grizzly attacks and stuff like that. And I was just wondering like which one of us sold them the VCR? <laughs> Cause it was probably one of us pickers that sold them the VCR for that show. It was kind of cool. 
or they just found one locally at a thrift store. But still, it was just a funny, funny thought. Okay, this sold. This is a, look at me guys, in a little bag. Uh, the bag sponsored by Finding Keepers Resale since he gave them to me. But they're kind of nice. I like them. I only really put clothes or bundles in them, but still, it's kind of nice. So this sold. This is a Bears single stitch t-shirt. Pretty cool uh, graphic on the front. Kind of a tie-dye look, and it is single stitch. It's NFL tag, and it's an extra large. This sold for $29.99 plus shipping. And this actually, mm, I don't know if this went to a viewer or not, but this person bought three items total. And the other two items are like Matchbox cars. Where are they located? Bin 12. Oh, that's the bin we were just in. Bin 12 is just getting a lot of movement. Someone wants to put their hand on it and then it just magically started selling. Oh, what is this by the way? Well, hold on, I'll show you. See that? Breda, it says, it's metal. It was in like some lot of stuff I got. No idea what it is. Yeah, these next two items are Elijah items, I believe. Did I grab the right ones? He had bought, a, he didn't even buy it. I think I bought it for him, I can't remember. We went to a viewer's house and did like a private pick and he wanted the box of cars. So these were two of the cars in there that he pulled out that were worth money. The blue one sold for 17 and the gray one sold for six. These are, they're like red lines, but they're, they're newer red lines. You see the red lines on the tire? That's usually if you find a red line on the tire of a, or of a Hot Wheel. Those are pretty good. There's some really old red lines that are worth like hundreds, but this was like a remake of a, re of a red line, but it was still good. It says red line right on the front there. And uh, that one's the one that sold for 17. This one, you know, six bucks. Not something I would have listed, but it's his item. And I said he could list whatever he wants at whatever price he wants, because he's doing the work. Although I guess I just pulled it. I should at least make him ship it. Although I got to ship the shirt. So really I'm gonna end up shipping it too. So I'm doing all the work. He listed it, I guess. So he did some of the work. So, okay. We're talking about whether or not I'm terrible at reselling. Maybe I am. That comment said I was. And you guys in the comments say I'm not. So, you know, it's up for debate. Let's put it there. I will say the street sharks I, I bought, I bought them for $20 a piece, basically. I paid $100 for like six. It's a mess over here, but these guys, this is a street dino and a street shark. And he had a marked at 25 and I talked him down to like 20 a piece because I thought they were really cool. And uh, my friend Mike, the death pile picker reached out and said he actually is collecting street sharks and he offered to buy four of the six I got for 30 a piece. So $120 for four and I paid $20 each. So for those four twenty four, I paid 80. So it gives me the reason I, so I said yes. And the reason I said yes is because it just instantly puts me into the profit on the buy. And he's just going to give me cash when we see each other and I'm going to hand them to him. So, you know, I'm going to take that hundred dollars, turn it into 120. And then I listed the last two for 35 and 45, $20 in the profit just by handing him those at the reseller alley. And then hopefully the other two sell for a total of around 80, getting me up to a hundred dollars in profit very quickly and easily. The last two listed so super fast. So again, it's, it's one of those things, right? Like would I always buy something that's a hundred that's going to sell for 200? It depends on if I like the item. Generally, I try to go for higher profits than that. But then again, I, I worked at a day job where you know, we were excited about 40% profit sometimes. So it's like, how do you do the margin math on that? If I sell it for two and it costs me one, that's 50%, right? It's 50% profit. I don't know. I don't, I don't want to pull out my spreadsheets, but I think that's basic math. Where did I put these shoes? They don't have a label on them. Uh oh, I'm sure I can find them though. Hold on. So yeah, I do think there, there's some truth to like sell what you love because you know, you don't necessarily need to make the same profit. If you know, you can sell it, you can sell it quick. And, uh, you can make a profit because I'm I'm pretty happy with making a hundred dollars basically in two weeks. Uh, making. <laughs> okay, so this guy is just constantly talking to me now. Freshly the Freshy the Snowman, and uh, he's pretty funny. He he basically is talking about. He was just saying tinkle bells, tinkle bells, tinkle all the way, and he just says like all this tough. All he's, he's basically potty humor sent to me by a viewer. Listen. Wait, do a different song. Oh, he's only saying that, but he says a bunch of other stuff. Like he'll say, make sure you wipe and like this sort of stuff. Uh, I crack jokes whenever you get near. It's motion censored. Holiday joy is in the air. Sniff, sniff, and it's not alone. Happy dot holidays to my number one favorite holiday visitor, or maybe you are a number two this time, right? So pretty funny. And it was sent by uh, Tracy. I'm one of your silent loyal watchers. I've been watching since early in the trash to cash days and I love it. I laugh myself tears each week. I'm a reseller and source in the Goodwill bins. I found this a couple months ago thinking it was just a Christmas decoration, but I didn't realize it's content, meaning the poopy jokes. Once I pushed a button and heard the first thing out of his mouth, I was like, oh, this is so Dave. So anyways, it's not a fuggler, but I hope you find it perversely weird for Christmas decor. I hope it gives you a laugh. Yeah, that's pretty funny. Thank you very much, Tracy. That is funny. 
And I set it up so like every time Tina walks by, it goes off and it scares her. So what was I looking for? Oh, I was looking for shoes. Where did I put these shoes? Hold on. How's there no bin number? Let me go hunt for a minute. All right, I found them. These are Nike Men's Blazer Mid-77 Vintage. They're not really vintage. 2020, they're like, they're called Ray Guns. I picked these up because, honestly, because Aussie Flipper told me so. <laughs> I was at some garage sales with me said, oh, those will do good, Dave, grab those. I'm not really a shoe reseller, but I did grab these. I bought two pairs and I think I paid 30 or 40 for the two pairs. This set sold for 30 and it's a lower value one. The other one should sell for like 60 to 70. Now we'll probably get 100 out of maybe 40, which is again, not really a pick I'd normally do, but I was in the shoe moment and uh, I will make a profit and they're selling. So that's good. This is almost all our money recouped right here. So I'd say as long as that other pair sells in the next month or two, I'll be, I'll be decently, moderately happy with the deal. Cause I got a bunch of other stuff at those sales. Now I did leave something behind at that yard sale. It was just like a transformer from like like mid 2000s what's not the prime it was some other transformer from mid 2000s there's yellow and it's, i think it sells for like 18 bucks and i left it behind and he threw it in for free so i guess <laughs> i got him to throw it in for free and then i forgot it anyways so it was all good and i sold jefferson starship now i got another comment a lot of great comments a lot of positive comments first of all let's start there but there was one comment about my theme park youtube channel which is another one of my hobbies now and the comment was basically saying it was uh that they didn't like that I had a theme park YouTube channel, that I was bragging about being able to go to theme parks. It was too far of a departure for them and, you know, basically it bothered them that I was doing this. I don't know, that kind of bothered me because I was, obviously I was not trying to brag or anything. Not even close to that. I was just telling you guys something I'm doing. And if you listen to my last video, I started the theme park YouTube channel because I had a YouTube channel I wasn't really using anymore that already had some followers on it that I felt like I was wasting. And on top of that, I'm already going to theme parks all the time because there's something I love to do. I love to sit in lines and <laughs> be around sweaty, loud people. I don't know why, but there's something about that that's therapeutic to me. Uh, whereas I know a lot of people like my wife, they don't love that. They get stressed out in those environments. But for me, like loud, crazy environments, like theme parks help me calm down. Although I hate the bins because the bins are so like filthy that they kind of gross me out. <laughs> because I know they're not cleaning anything and people are finding like broken glass and rats and they, they recently found a human skull at the Goodwill uh, in the donation box. So I don't know, I just, I get creeped out by the Goodwill bins, but I know people make a ton of money there. I just don't have any near me. But yeah, so, you know, I love theme parks and yes, I am pulling an order. It's just taking a minute because it was of course on the bottom of the stack over there. But it's something I love to do, something I'm already doing. I already have a channel that's ready for content. I watch half of what I watch on YouTube. Actually, it's like one third of what I watch on YouTube is theme park stuff. One third is reselling, one third is cooking. So I already have a cooking channel. I already have a reselling channel. Why not make a theme park channel? Since I know I'm gonna keep going to theme parks, it just makes sense to make some content while I'm there because it's something I enjoy doing. And they were saying that I was bragging because I got to do go to theme parks all the time. And listen, going to theme parks for me is not as big of a deal maybe as it is for that co commenter, right? For me, it's an hour and 20 minute drive, right? For them, it might be a 12 hour drive and they might have to get a hotel room, which costs extra money. And they probably aren't a season pass holder, it means they have to buy tickets each time. For me, especially with Universal, I've been a season pass holder for almost two years now anyways. I go there and I come home, I don't need to stay at a hotel. Sometimes I do, but like just the other day I went, I didn't. I just drive an hour and a half, go in for free, maybe spend 30, 40 bucks on some food, if that, and then I come home. I mean, it's just literally the cost of gas. So it's not like I'm, I'm able to just go spend whatever at theme parks, I can't. But I can go and have fun because I'm a, a season pass holder. So I don't really think it's bragging. I think if you lived an hour away from a theme park and you bought a season pass, you could also go whenever you wanted. Anyways, I know most of you don't care <laughs> and don't think this way, but I did want to address that one comment. I'm not trying to brag or anything. I already had the season pass. I am going to finally get a season pass to Disney because I've been wanting one and me and my family have been talking about it for a long time anyways. Uh, my parents have one. My sister has a season pass with all her kids. So, you know, we're going to get that and it, it kind of justifies getting that because it can be a, a business expense at this point. It helps justify the expense. But other than that, like the cost is just gas and maybe some food. It's not that expensive of a, of a thing to do. So just wanted to clarify that. Now we can get back to the reselling. So Jefferson Starship on Select Division sold. And that is actually something I should focus on listening today. I have the Select Division sitting right here under the camera. It's a player. It sells for like 250 to 300 and it should work. I need to test it. But we did some work on it and it should work now. Uh, Tony helped me. Hopefully it's working. So I'm gonna plug that into a TV and get it listed for 250. That would be a good use of 20 minutes of my day. But yeah, this Jefferson Starship sold for 1275. So here's what I've learned with Selectivision discs. They're not great. Uh, most of the ones I listed I had to bundle or they were worth like 
you know, five to 10 bucks alone. I probably, the only one that really was good was Friday the 13th, uh, part two. I think we sold that for 40 or 50, which I paid 50 for the whole buy. So that one select division disc got me broken even. I've sold a few others that we're already in the profit on these discs and stuff. And of course the player, if it does work when I test it today, will get us way in the profit. And these will slowly sell for 10 to 15 bucks a piece, but I probably wouldn't buy them again just based on what I like to sell and how much I like to list for 15 plus. It's hard to find these that are worth more than 15. Same reason I'm not really buying laser discs anymore because I, I did that. I learned from that buy last time I did one and I they had some at the flea market I think Paul bought them but I didn't want to buy them because I bought a laser disc and I think I bought 200 and I think three had any real value the rest were worth almost nothing actually I think I still have them all sitting here untouched because they're all only worth like five to twelve bucks a piece I'm trying not to sell, sell stuff that cheap what I should do is go and do like a laser disc auction I know there is collectors out there and whatnot or I should bundle them and sell them as like a big bundle on eBay that is something I should do though I should totally just set up some record auctions and some laser discs auctions because those are just sitting in my garage on the bottom shelf for the last two years not being touched. I had this moment where I was like getting into the, the record thing, but then I got a few complaints about the condition not being right. And I was like, ugh, I don't wanna sell these anymore. So I basically totally took my foot off the gas and just have been storing them ever since. 752, $752, that's not true. Cause that still includes the thing I haven't shipped. So 752 minus 389. Let's just say minus 400 for math's sake. 350 bucks. 350 bucks in the last day and a half. So not bad. Not a bad day in day and a half. I said I did do quite a bit of listing. I did some cross listing on uh, Vendu over to Mercari while I was sitting in the dentist's office with my daughter today because she had to get a cleaning. But I think I listed something like $500 over the last day and a half. Listed 500, sold 300. So I don't know if there's any, any connection to those two numbers, but maybe some people think there is. 450 listings, I still wanna get my listings up higher. We'll get there, we'll get there. All right guys, that was it for today's video. Hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe, hit the like button and check out the next video, the, the most recent video, the next video. Just check them all out, guys. I appreciate you coming. Hope you enjoyed this. I think I'm repeating myself now. Bye. Oh, one more thing real quick. I sold a plushy horse on Macari, actually. This guy here. It's an Appaloosa plush. What's the brand on that? Applause. Applause brand. Sold that for $15 plus shipping. Actually sold that a few days ago, but I forget sometimes to pull my Macari order. So we'll get that shipped out today. Uh, Cross-listed that with Vendu. As always, my link down below. Save 25% on your first month of Vendu.